Greetings, everybody. It's your old pal Frank here, and happy Monday. So, folks, as usual, before we get to our scheduled fun, it's time to take a look at what went on around the NHL this past weekend. And mind you, there was a lot of games going on, but I, I actually only paid attention to one. And that was, of course, the the afternoon game between the Habs and the Senators. And the reason why I paid so much attention to that one game was because on Thursday, uh, the Senators played us here in Montreal, and they beat us. So we needed a redemption win. And that came on Saturday. It was a low-scoring game. It was a 2-1 win for us. But... Um, Still, it was it was a fun game to watch. Also, got to give big props to Montreal's newest netminder, Mr. Jake Allen, for making those 34 saves to get us the win. And then, I got to give big props to Jeff Petrie and Mr. Josh Anderson for taking care of the goal scoring duties in that game. Uh, also, I know on Sunday there was the first of 10 meetings between the Oilers and the Calgary Flames in the ever so awesome, you know, Battle of Alberta, and I believe uh Calgary won in overtime, I think. And um I really wanted to take a look at that game, but of course, Sunday was the Super Bowl, and after that was over, I was, I was out, <laughs> so um, I didn't get a chance to, to check it out, but uh, from what I've seen on NHL.com, apparently um, Calgary won, and I believe uh, Sam Bennett got I think one goal or the game winning goal, I'm not sure. And even in a losing effort, Connor McDavid still managed to get, I think, a goal and an assist. <laughs> what else is new for Mr. Connor McDavid? Next, as I was just mentioning, Sunday was the Super Bowl. So, as everyone knows, Sunday was the big game, pitting two great field generals against each other. In the forms of Tampa Bay's all holy <laughs> Tom Brady, or the GOAT, as a lot of people like to call him. Myself personally, I'm not the biggest Tom Brady fan, um, but I won't take away, you know, all his accolades and whatnot. I mean, the man is, <laughs> he's like, he's like football royalty, so... You know, what what's there to say about Brady that hasn't been said already? So, and then you had him going against the the young buck, uh, Kansas City's own Patty, Patrick Mahomes. And well, let's just say the um, the Bucks pretty much stomped the Chiefs. <laughs> and myself, I was I was of course rooting for Kansas City, but. It it just wasn't happening. <laughs> I mean, uh, all the points Kansas City made uh, were from field goals. Uh, they didn't make it into the end zone once. <laughs> and, um, yeah. <laughs> now, just me saying that, um, that, that wasn't Patty Mahomes' fault, though. Because you, you could really see he was... He was really trying to make something basically out of nothing. I mean, he was he was pulling off, you know, passes just before getting sacked and like you could you could really see he was trying and it was the players in front of him that really didn't seem to be gelling and well, that's why the Super Bowl final was I believe what 31 to 9. And, um, yeah, 
<laughs> also, uh, after last night's game, uh, good luck trying to find a Patrick Mahomes rated rookie, a low end Brady rookie. And uh, I say that because I tried. Uh, I think I was up for a good uh, an hour and a half scouring eBay. Uh, found a lot of, um, as they were being called, um, novelty cards of the rookie cards. So basically, like for the Brady stuff. So basically, like, you know, facsimile versions or, or like, you know, reprints in that. But no legit rookies. Uh, I did though manage to find uh, a Gronk rookie for two bucks, so that's that's a score on that, I guess. And uh, I also tried really quickly looking up a um, a Peyton Manning rookie card, and um, I think the cheapest one I found was for like sixty bucks. And I tried looking one up due to him being announced. Uh, in this year's uh, Hall of Fame class, along with a few other names that I apologize I'm not very familiar with, but um, yeah, <laughs> but hey, in the end, I managed to find a Gronk rookie card for two bucks, so can't go wrong there, I guess. And then finally, uh, we end on a sad note, because um, this past Sunday, while the Super Bowl was going on and everything. Uh, we actually lost a, um, a Habs great. Uh, we lost the one and only Mr. Ralph Backstrom. Um, the 1959 Calder Trophy winner. That is, of course, for those who are not familiar with the Calder Trophy, that goes to the Rookie of the Year. And uh, six-time Stanley Cup winner, uh, passed away after a lengthy illness, and um, he was 83, so he, li he lived a heck of a life. And uh, some, some Backstrom highlights for you, he played in 1,032 NHL games for the Montreal Canadiens, the LA Kings, and the Chicago Blackhawks. Between 56 57 and 72 73, uh, scoring 639 points. That's 278 goals and 361 assists. Uh, 40 of his goals were game winners. And he also played another 304 games for four teams in the WHA from 73 to 77. And those teams were the Chicago Cougars, the Denver Spurs slash Ottawa Civics, and the New England Whalers. So, so Ralph Backstrom passed at the age of 83, and as I say to all the greats that leave us, he, he, he lived a great life, and it was a huge bucket of win. So that's your NHL, and I guess in this case, NFL news. For this past weekend. Now it's on to our regularly scheduled programming. Here we go. Alrighty folks, I'm back. And for those of you wondering, yes, I will be leaving this Ralph Backstrom card up here in the background for the remainder of the video. Uh, basically, it's going to be my way of paying my respects to Mr. Backstrom. Now in today's video, we're finally doing another set spotlight. Now I've only done one of these in the past and I feel I feel it's finally time for another one. Actually, in the last couple videos that I've posted, ooh, excuse me. I've said that I I wanted to do another set spotlight and well, a couple weeks ago, I ended up purchasing uh, a couple small sets off a gentleman on Facebook Marketplace. And uh, one of those sets I got, I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> we gotta do a spotlight on this set because it's gorgeous. Also, for those of you who didn't see the very first spotlight video I did, um, I'll try and remember to post a link of it in the description on this video. But uh, basically, 
after I found the complete 92-93 upper deck set, uh, again on Facebook Marketplace for like 20 bucks, uh, I did a I did a huge video just looking over this this monster of a set. And uh, yeah, for those of you who are not familiar with this set, it's it's big. In its entirety, I believe it's 644 cards. And um, yeah, it's it's a doozy. Uh, but today, the set we're going to be taking a look at is is not that big. In fact, the entire base set is only a mere 87 cards. But what what it doesn't make up for in size, it makes up for in sheer awesomeness. And you'll see why in a little bit. Also, um, if you saw my Instagram this morning, uh, you would know that I, I was extremely happy that I could finally buy hockey cards again at Dollarama. And I found out at Walmart here in the province of Quebec, the whole, uh, you know, non-essential, essential, you know, hoopla has been lifted. So we will be opening packs of cards once again here on the channel soon. And uh, I was going to open one of those, uh, well, actually, I purchased two this morning of those hockey mystery bags in today's video. But when I got home, I was just too excited and, and I opened them right away but don't worry i will be purchasing more in the future that that's a given also if we have enough time at the end of today's video i wanted to uh, go over something concerning my my top 10 list for this year but again that's only if we have enough time at the end of the video right now i really want to focus on the the set at hand so without further ado let me pick up the camera here and grab the binder also before we crack into this it's come to my attention that um with some of my viewers it's become kind of like a little game in in each one of my videos to see how many times i bump the camera <laughs> and i think that's hilarious i just wish i knew how to edit in a little counter to, to go up every time I actually bump the camera when I let's say open a pack or something but um, in the future I'll try and remember how many times I actually bump the camera and, and I'll put a little thing in the description a little bump count <laughs> all right so the set we're taking a look at today folks is none other than the 2008 2009 upper deck masterpieces set hockey edition i should add because there is a baseball edition too and um yeah this this is one of my well one of my all-time favorite sets but it's also one of my favorite sets from the early to mid 2000s and also if you guys notice, every time I open Series 1 or Series 2 packs, and I happen to pull a canvas card, you know I always say, hey, a canvas card. You guys know how I love my canvas cards. It's because of this set. Because every card in this set has a canvas finish to it. And it's, it's amazing. Now, uh, this set, like I said is only 87 cards uh, there were um, numbered slash colored parallels to the base set um, I believe there were green brown red blue and black parallels black being one of one so that's like a parallel with an asterisk next to it because one of ones are like insanely hard to pull but uh, yes, there were numbered parallels to the base set, as well as uh, autograph cards and memorabilia cards. But there are none of those in this binder. This is just straight up, bare bones base set. Now, the one thing that really got me wanting to put this set together was actually one day opening one of those Dollarama mystery packs 
and pulling this Richard Brodeur card. Uh, when I pulled it, I was looking at it, and I'm like, this thing is beautiful. From the the gold piping around the border of the card, the, the awesome artwork, again, the, the canvas finish. I mean, this, this is a great set to own. And um, it was one of those, you know, I'd put it off for a while, then... Then, you know, I'd see one. I'm like, oh, yeah, I got to try and put that set together. Then put it off for a while. And then finally, like I said, a couple weeks ago, there was a guy selling this on Facebook Marketplace. He wanted 10 bucks for the complete set, and I couldn't pass it up. Also, it's another one of those, you know, who's who's of legendary players. And you know me, I love my old-time hockey players. And, um, again, for anyone out there, who are, who are into the old timers in that, well, this is the set for you. So let me try and prop this up and let's go over the, you know, who's who in this set. So, of course, you got to kick off the set with Mr. Stanley himself, Lord Stanley, uh, followed by Lester B. Pearson, who, of course, was a uh, former Prime Minister of Canada and a uh, hockey coach we have miss lady bing who i'm sure you guys are all familiar with the lady bing trophy which goes to like the most gentleman player in the nhl every year well there's miss lady bing uh, bill barilko you guys all know the story the last goal he ever scored won the leafs the cup uh yari curry sil apps of course patrick waugh Ron Hextall, and I, I love this Ron Hextall card because um, the little write-up on the back of it talks about how he's the first goalie to ever score a goal. And before I continue, I feel I have to go into a bit of a description here because I'm sure there's someone out there going, well, wait, isn't Billy Smith the first goalie to ever get a goal? Let me... Let me reiterate, yes, Billy Smith is the first goalie to ever get a goal, but he was awarded the goal because uh, when when the play played out, he was the last person to have touched the puck. Now, in Ron Hextall's uh, case, he is the first goalie to ever score a goal by actually taking a shot on goal. He he fired the puck down the length of the ice and got it in the empty net. So he is officially the first goalie to ever score a goal. Yes, Billy Smith is the first goalie to ever be awarded a goal, but Hextall is the first one to actually score a goal. And then I believe a year later, because he, uh, he scored his first goal in 87, and I believe a year later, in 88, he did it again. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's why Ron Hextall, you know, besides all the, the crazy fights and whatnot he got into, he, he has a special place on my list of all-time favorite goalies. So, yeah. All right, let's see. Who else is in this set? I'm trying to be very careful to turn the page here because I don't want the binder to fall down. Uh, all right, who do we got here? Well, we got Mario Lemieux. We got uh, Messier with the with the cup when the Rangers won in 94. Um, we got Lester Patrick. This is pretty cool. Lester Patrick was a coach for the Rangers. And I, I don't know the year exactly, but it was in the 30s. Um, their goalie got injured. And this was in the era before the whole backup goalie thing came into existence and what happened is it's just <laughs> it's hard to think of it happening in today's day and age because it just wouldn't but Lester Patrick the coach of the team suited up and went in nets and they won the game <laughs> yeah it's it's stories like that where I'm just like man hockey's beautiful also, it's because of this gentleman right here, uh, we have the penalty shot, 
and the playoff the playoff system in in hockey uh, this this is an awesome moment right here uh, this was when Boston retired Phil Esposito's number seven and uh, the videos on YouTube it's amazing because um, up until they retired his number Ray Bork wore number seven and uh, in in that ceremony you see he skates over to, to Espo here pulls off the number seven jersey and shows that he starts wearing the 77 and it's just an one of those awesome moments and then this Ray Bork card is great because this is when he finally won his cup and what was neat about this and I remember watching this on TV uh, Joe Sackick was the captain of the team of the Avalanche and when they went to present the cup to him he refused to, to pick it up basically he had Ray Bork pick up the cup first as as a huge sign of respect and as a way to say Ray here you go here's your cup oh, it's beautiful uh, this was when Gretzky broke uh, Phil Esposito's uh, single-season goal record. Uh, Dale Howarchuk, this is when he won the Calder Cup, uh, the Calder Trophy, sorry, in 81-82 uh, for a top rookie in the league. Oh, what do we got here? Well, we got the infamous Gretzky trade from Edmonton to L.A. We got Patrick Waugh. That, that's actually his rookie card. Well, a painting of his rookie card. Uh, Cam Neely, another uh, 50 goals, uh, I believe, in 50 games uh, guy. <laughs> Mike Bossy, of course. Uh, Lanny McDonald. This this was a great moment, too. Because in 89, when uh, Calgary won the cup, Lanny finally got his cup in that game. He scored his 500th career goal. And after all that, he decided, ah, nah, it's time to retire now. <laughs> Perfect ending to a great career. Uh, here we got Bobby Hull with the uh, Winnipeg Jets. Uh, I believe when he went to Winnipeg, he became the first hockey player to ever sign a million-dollar contract. And I was, of course, with the WHA and everything, but still pretty damn cool. All right, on the next page... If I can get a grip here. Oh, wow. And we've got a who's who here, starting with Bobby Hull and Gordie Howe, both in the WHA. That's the Winnipeg Jets and the Houston Arrows. George Vezina, of course, named on the Vezina Trophy for best goal. You guys know that. Uh, George Hainsworth, uh, probably one of the greatest uh, shutout streaks in the history of hockey. Uh, Tony O, of course. Phil Esposito again. Bobby Orr with Team Canada. That was that was the 76. Um, what was that like? The World Championships. Now, of course, one of the most famous images probably in hockey history. Bobby Orr's uh, winning goal in the 1970 Stanley Cup. And uh, pop quiz. Can anyone name me the guy who's behind Bobby Orr in this picture? And who is the goalie that Bobby Orr is scoring on? Just figured I'd put that out there. I know myself, and I'm sure a lot of you know. So, you know, just to, to, to keep it fresh, you know. Then we also got uh, Yari Curry with the Avalanche, which is so weird to see. And we got Turk Broda, who I believe, I'm not 100% sure, is uh, still the most winningest uh, goalie in Toronto Maple Leafs history, I think. Or, or is it Terry Sacha? I don't, I don't know. I'm sure someone out there knows. Uh, who we got here? Uh, Daryl Sittler, of course, who uh, we just celebrated... Uh, the 45th anniversary of him uh, doing the 10-point uh, uh, game last night. Uh, we got Rick Vive, first 50-goal uh, scorer in uh, Maple Leafs history. I got Scotty Bowman with uh, with the cup in uh, Detroit. This is one of my favorites. That's Foster Hewitt. Uh, came out of retirement specifically to call the 72 Summit Series. Of course, the great one. 
Uh, we got here Johnny Bauer, Grant Fuhrer, Bobby Hull, Brian Leach with his Con Smythe, Bobby Bond. Ugh. I mean, aren't these aren't these gorgeous cards? Oh my God, so nice. Well, here here's a who's who. I mean, that's such an iconic image of Jean Beliveau with the Stanley Cup. Dino Cicerelli, who I believe today is his uh, birthday. I believe today is his 62nd birthday. So, how fitting. Uh, we got the big M, Frank Mahovlich. That was when he got his 500 goal with Montreal. <laughs> uh, Peter Stastny with the Calder Trophy. Marcel Dion. Rob Langway with the uh, Norris Trophy. Bobby Clark, of course, with all his teeth. This is probably one of my favorite cards out of the entire set. It's the Sutter clan. <laughs> and then of course we got Steve Shutt, who I believe was the first player in NHL history to score uh, 60 goals in a season. All right, come on, binder, cooperate. <laughs> okay, I'll just hold it. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, okay. We'll do a little, little Batman... Uh, camera work here <laughs> uh, we got Manel Rayom uh, shout out to gaming cards and more I know he PCs Manel Rayom and he's got an amazing <laughs> collection of her stuff uh, what else we got here Gilbert Perrault one third of the infamous French Connection Alex Del Vecchio Rogi Vashal, probably one of the coolest goalie masks ever. The smiley mask, I call it. Uh, we got the entertainer, Eddie Shack. Clear the track for Eddie Shack. <laughs> uh, we got here, of course, Willie O'Ree. Uh, Guy Lafleur with the Rangers. That was, I believe, uh, the, the end of his career. Bernie Perrault, of course. Andy Bathgate. Craig McTavish in a blues uniform. That's an odd one. Because he will always be an oiler to me. <laughs> also uh, known as one of the, if not last, player to ever play without a helmet. Uh, and we got, of course, Gordie Howe with a fitting image of all the pucks representing all the goals he scored. 801 career goals and then of course we got Gretzky here when he broke that record with 802 and then on the last page here of course we got Mario Lemieux again Mark Messier Mark Messier Bobby Orr I love this card because it's Gordie Howe and what appears to be uh, Terry Sawchuck so that's pretty neat and um, that's that's it 87 cards of just pure beauty I guess you could say so yeah there you go another set spotlight in the book and now that we're going on 20 minutes uh, I guess I could go over the whole thing about my uh, top 10 list really quick so I'm thinking uh, every month going after one card on my list and January was really good because uh, I I managed to get a card off my list and then a good buddy of mine Mike aka Canadian cards ever so graciously gifted another card off my list to me and Mike, if you're watching this, I'm going to say it till I'm blue in the face. Thank you oh so much for that card. But again, since we're in a new month, since it's February, it's now time to go after another card on the list. And what I want to do is have you, the viewers, uh, try and duke it out in the comments and uh, decide what card I should go after and then 
To make it even more interesting, uh, I'm going to take the eight remaining cards on my list, put them on one of those Wheel of Fortune doohickeys that I see a lot of you guys use for uh, determining winners in your giveaways and contests, and let it pick a winner as well. So then um, I'll, I'll take the comments from YouTube and I'll pit them against the Wheel of Fortune. And when I do the Wheel of Fortune thing, I'm going to record it and I'm going to post it to my Instagram. And then I'll see which, which name is mentioned the most in the comments and if it compares to the winner on the wheel. And then I'll just go after that card. And hopefully it's not too expensive because I know there's a few cards on my list that are a tad pricey nothing too far over a hundred bucks but still anyway so for those of you wondering what cards uh, are still on my top 10 list to go after well as you can see here we got the 88 uh, tops Bob Probert rookie card the 81 tops Joe Montana rookie card uh, the 1969 OPG Stanley Cup card, the 67 tops Carl Yastrzemski card, a 65 tops Ed Jockman rookie card, a 61 tops Boston Bruins team card, a 1960 Fleer Babe Ruth. Oh, that that's going to be a beauty when I eventually get that card. And then number one, a 1957 tops Dolph Shays rookie card. And uh, yes, you can see by the check marks uh, in in January, I managed to get myself a 2005 Upper Deck Henrik Lundqvist Young Guns rookie card off of a gentleman on Facebook Marketplace for a steal. And then in spot number 10, it was the 1989 Fleer Billy Ripken FF Error card that was ever so graciously gifted to me. So, once again... Take a nice little look at the list. <laughs> and now, go duke it out in the comments below. And with that being said, we've now come to the end of the video. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give her a thumbs up. If not, give her a thumbs down. And most importantly, folks, before leaving, make sure to like, comment, and click that big old subscribe button. And as I say at the end of every video, folks, keep collecting what you enjoy collecting, and I'll see you all in the next one. Laters!